Hi there, everyone. I'm meteorologist Ashley Baylor with a check of your latest forecast. Well, if you haven't heard, we now have three hurricanes that stretch from the Gulf of Mexico right into the Caribbean and the Atlantic. We do have Hurricane Katia, which is out in the Gulf of Mexico. I'm not going to focus any attention on that because it is not expected to affect us here in the U.S. So we'll leave that one alone. We have Hurricane Jose became a Category 1 hurricane as of the 5 o'clock update from the National Hurricane Center. At this point, this one does not pose a threat to the U.S. at all either. So right now, our focus focus remains on Hurricane Irma, still a very strong Category 5 hurricane with wind sustained at 185 miles per hour, and it is continuing to move west-northwest at 16 miles per hour. It is done making its way, really barreling across the uh, Virgin Islands here, and the eye is making its way just north of Puerto Rico. So even though Puerto Rico is not taking a direct hit from this storm, it is getting quite a bit of an impact here with extremely strong winds and some very heavy rainfall. So I think last read on Twitter that there's about 300,000 people in Puerto, Rico, in Puerto Rico without power at this point. Now, here's a look at the track of Irma. And as you can see, it is expected to remain a Category 5 hurricane all the way into tomorrow as it makes its approach to southern parts of the Bahamas. As it makes its approach across the Bahamas, you can see that's really not going to make this storm weaken very much. It is still going to remain a very strong Category 5 hurricane all the way through Friday. Then let's take you out to Saturday. And you can see by Saturday, it has the potential to drop to a Category 4 hurricane with winds at 155 miles per hour. But one thing to note, to be a Category 5 hurricane, it has to be sustained wind speeds of 157. So you're only talking about a 2 mile per hour difference here. So it's still possible that it could remain a Category 5 hurricane as it starts to make the turn towards southern Florida. So at this point, this is according to the National Hurricane Center, it has the possibility of making landfall in southern Florida somewhere near Monroe or Dade County, Florida. And then as you can see, it's expected to track over central and eastern parts of Florida right through Jacksonville and into Georgia. And as that happens, notice it will remain a major Category 3 hurricane all the way potentially into Monday with winds at 120 miles per hour. So at this point, the storm is so strong and so big that even making landfall and tracking across the big state of Florida will not necessarily tear the storm apart very quickly. Now, one thing to note, you have this cone of uncertainty here. So there's still that slim possibility. It may not make landfall in southern Florida, that it's still possible. It may skirt right along the east coast and then maybe even make landfall somewhere along the Georgia or South Carolina coast. Let's take a look at our spaghetti models here, and they seem to think uh, that that is possible, that it could just skirt along the eastern coast of Florida and then maybe make landfall somewhere near Savannah or Hilton Head, South Carolina, or possibly Charleston, South Carolina. That's still possible. So it's something that Floridian residents have to be aware of. If you live along the coast of Georgia, South Carolina, even through North Carolina, you really have to make preparations for this storm. Because remember, Matthew was set to make a direct hit to Florida, and that didn't happen. It skirted right along the coast and then came up towards our neck of the woods. So there is still some wiggle room with this. But I will say this builds confidence in the forecast. To see our two main forecast models, the American and the European model, has so much consistency this far out. You can see that both models do want to take the center of Irma right over southern Florida and then skirt right along the east coast and maybe even make a potential secondary landfall again somewhere along Georgia or southern parts of South Carolina. From there it looks like both of these models want to take this storm farther inland. Well eventually it will just become an area of low pressure. But if we get the center of this storm farther inland basically west of Hampton Roads will actually be in a pretty decent situation. It means we won't take the brunt of this storm but yes we are going to deal with some rain and yes we are going to deal with uh, some windy conditions, especially going into Tuesday. But between now and then, things are actually looking great for this evening and through about midnight. Yes, we will be tracking some scattered showers and storms, but Thursday afternoon looking beautiful, back into the sunshine. We'll keep the sunshine going right through the upcoming weekend with comfortable temperatures, comfortable levels of humidity. But as of Monday afternoon, that's when we could start to tap into some of the moisture associated with Irma. So all eyes on Irma going into the first half of next week.